Okay, how's that? I think that's working. So, let me just refresh this. Hello? I think that's working. That is working. But, um, I seem to have lost myself. Let me close this. It says it's going at 60 frames per second, and I have dropped zero frames, but um, I don't know. I want to disable. Good. 60 frames per second, and I have dropped zero frames. This microphone is not working uh, that great, so. Um, if you'll excuse me just a second, I'm going to set this one up, uh, and this one will give us the results that we desire, the results that we need. Let's see if I can get this cord to reach. Okay, testing, testing, one, two, three, is that working? There's a little okay. bit of a delay. Testing, testing, one, two, three, that's, is that working better? Testing, there's testing. a little bit of a delay. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That's, is that working better? Testing, there's testing. a little bit of a delay. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the volume down over here. Uh, that should be good. Um, but I have to repeat everything that I said earlier. Uh, so let me just get my screen ready to go. This streaming thing is very complicated. Uh, I don't know how you people do it. I just started doing it, uh, and it's uh, driving me crazy. Anyways, um, earlier I was saying, <clears throat> rather, let me start from the beginning. Hello, welcome. We're ready to start with our painting. As you can see, I have taped down my watercolor paper onto this piece of masonite board. We have our colors here, color palette ready to go. It looks a little bit different on camera than it does uh, in real life. For instance, this looks a little bit uh, very cyanish um, on the screen, but it looks very similar to this color, a little bit of a darker. It is Prussian blue after all, um, so it doesn't look Prussian on the screen. Um, and I also have a range of different colors that I'll be using for the different skin tones throughout here. Um, <clears throat> again, let me review the colors that I will be using for this painting. For the blue of the jacket and some of the, the darker uh, shades throughout, I'm going to be adding some Prussian blue. You can see it right here, Prussian blue, Prussian blue. Um, and these are whole fine watercolor paints. I will be using Vermilion Permanent Yellow Light. Burnt Umber, and this was Crimson Lake for the different various skin tones that we will find throughout the face. Um, I have, as I said, I've taped down my piece of watercolor paper so that it stays in place, it doesn't warp too much. It will be warping, um, as with any watercolor painting. Now, this is a little bit of a, wa a lighter watercolor paper, so I will not actually um, uh, 
be able to try to keep it as flat as possible. It is going to have some warping going on. Um, one way to prevent this is to wet the paper beforehand and then just kind of squeegee it off onto the, the masonite board, dry it off a little bit around the edges, then tape it down, um, and then let it dry. That uh, I've heard, I've never actually tried it, but I read it on the internet and I heard people talk about this as a way to kind of pre-stretch watercolor paper. Um, and so if you want to look that up, that's called pre-stretching watercolor paper. Um, okay, so I, I do believe we are about ready to start with our painting. I'm a little bit nervous because this is um, the subject, obviously, it's John Lennon and uh, I, I want to do him justice. He's, he created so much great art in his lifetime and I just want to uh, paint this as a tribute to uh, John Lennon. Um, so, I'm going to set this aside for now. I'm actually going to tape it up to my little lamp over here. You probably can't see it, but it's there. I'll, I'll swivel the camera around in a little bit so you can see. I've got my reference there. I'm going to move my palette over to my right side. Since I am right-handed, I'm putting my palette and I'm going to be putting my waters over on my right side. I don't want to accidentally drip on the watercolor paper as I pass the brush over it. Um, so I've got my palette here. Don't really need this anymore. This was just Again, for test purposes, um, let me put my paints back over here. Um, all right, so now let me set this down here. I have a little bit of a mess still. Um, let's go there. Let's move my key forward. Okay, so this is flat, ready to go. Um, let's take a look at what we have. Actually, you know what? I'm going to move this over and I'm going to move my face over to the other side. So let's move my face over to the right. Yay, there we go. So now you can actually see that. So it's a little bright, so let me adjust this light to kind of even it out. lift it up a little bit so that it's not so intense. Whoa, falling over. Okay, that's good. I can see it perfectly. Let's see if I can make this go any higher. I can. There we go. Push this up a little bit more so you can get a good look at it. Okay, so I might actually move that the next time I paint uh, with this, so um, that way, I wish I could, uh, uh, maybe I'll have to move it over to this camera. Let me show you my setup here really quick, even though it was a hassle to get this set up. Let's see if I can take this carefully. So, uh, as you can see, I've got my Luxo my lamp, it's illuminating my workspace, and I have this old lamp that I been using. I just kind of have this uh, this gorilla pod with the webcam kind of pointing down at the workspace. So that's what I'm working with right now. Let me set this back over here. Uh, okay, so water. Let me go get some water. So it's a good idea to have two basins of water, one with clean water, one with uh, the dirty water. I have both here. I have some brushes here. Um, there we go. And I'll uh, take up too much of my work. 
workspace. Um, and I have a little bowl here that I'm going to be using. They're just these, uh, these little cheapy plastic bowls. I don't know where they came from. Um, it's probably the art store. These are dirty, so I'm going to put these over somewhere else. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a big brush, even bigger than this one. Um, and actually, the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-wet uh, the space that I will be working on first. And I think the space that I'm going to be working on first and pre-wetting first is going to be um, this area up here, um, up here, kind of uh, the negative space around the hair, right through here. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you wet on wet technique um, by pre-wetting and then adding in some of the, some of the colors. Uh, there we go. So I'm going to be using uh, this brush. It's a, it's a Liquitex um, freestyle brush that came in a little art whatever pack. What's it called? Art snack pack? Whatever it's called. Not entirely sure. Um, so I'm wetting the brush. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, first I need to make sure that the brush it wasn't dirty to begin with. Uh, if it was, it, it's fine. Um, but I think I had a little bit of charcoal on it before. Okay, so there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start um, adding in some of this. And see, I already dripped a little bit right there, and that's okay. I'm going to try to avoid that spot right there. Oh, that actually goes over. Um, so I'm just going to start. I'm going to go a little bit into these areas of the hair. Again, because I am just kind of pre-wetting it. Uh, up top, I'm not going to go too much into the hair. Um, I did over here because there are some areas that kind of, uh, you can see through the hair. Um, and so I want to have a little bit of the color behind it. It's not too much of a big deal because um, most of the hair in that part is going to be darker than, than the space surrounding it. So I'm going right up to the edge. Um, it's a good idea to kind of lean in and take a look to see if you are getting all the way in. So here, I'm noticing that I have uh, this line right here, so this needs to go about here. I'm going to add a little bit of a line here. Um, so I tend to mumble when I work, uh, mostly because uh, as I work, I'm trying to concentrate. So I'm switching over to the left, no, the right side of my brain. So um, again, I apologize for any mumbling. I do have this new microphone over here. Uh, well, rather this different microphone, new to you, not new to me. Okay. So there's already a little bit of warping going on, so I'm just going to um, brush off some of this excess water. I don't need too much. I just need it to be wet enough. So that whenever I start, I'm going to bring some up in here actually. So that whenever I start adding the color, um, it's going to spread smoothly. So I have pre-wet uh, the paper in those spots. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off uh, with the Prussian blue. I think that's going to be the, the main color uh, through here. Um, you can see it's a little bit green through here, but it's mostly blue. Maybe going to use a little bit of the umber up in this corner. But again, we've got a, a very blue sky. So I'm going to start off. In the brush, and some blue. Got a little 
little bit more water to it. And actually, before I dirty this water even more, I'm going to put some in my bowl right there. That's going to be our, our water adding water. Um, okay, so, um, so I don't know if you can see. I hope you can. Uh, there we go. So if you'll notice, I, I just touched the paper and the paint starts to bleed and it starts to uh, make a nice smooth transition from where I'm adding the paint to the other parts. Um, and it's going to look a little bit blotchy and that's perfect. That's what I want. I don't want it to be a perfectly uh, even area of color. darker here here, bring it over up to here, where I have some of this color. And again, as I do this, I'm looking at my reference, always looking at my reference. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that blue on there to dry, and I'm going to start adding the blue uh, to this section up here. This part of the hair might be a little bit too too wide out. I think I overdid it. This could probably come in a little bit more. So I'm gonna make that adjustment. I'm gonna erase those lines when I'm done. But I'm just bringing in a little bit of the blue. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt umber. Well, first, I'm going to take a little bit of the blue, make a little pile. With my brush, take a little bit of the burnt umber, mix it with my blue. There we go. That's about right. And I'm going to bring this color over to this side. And so this over here looks a little bit brownish. So this is going to sit over in this corner, this will come through here, some down through here, alright, so now I'm going to take some blue. I'm going to add it right in here just to kind of get this little this little space. Let it blend out a little bit with the blue umber mixture right through there. Let's blend it out a little bit more. We want it a little bluer. Let's bring some of it to here. bit in this corner. Again, I'm looking at my reference, seeing where I need what. I'll take a little bit more of the blue. And I'm going to add it in this corner, right here near the hair. Okay. Let's take a little bit more blue. back over here, and I'm going to start adding in a little bit of the blue so that it makes it a little bit darker. And I'm actually not sure about the, it looks a little green, but I'm thinking that a little bit of this right through here is going to get me the color that I need. It's kind of greenish. I get 
these little hairs. Not bad, not bad. This is looking good so far. Let's take a little bit more blue for this corner down here. And again, because I am working wet on wet, I am allowing the the paint to mix a little bit with its surroundings. If I was trying to get nice crisp edges, and I dipped into a, a wet area, it would bleed all over the place. And I don't want it to bleed. Okay, now, this is looking a little bit too dark to full, uh, compared to what I see on the reference. So what I'm going to do is I clean the brush and I dry the brush. And I'm just going to pick up some of this pigment. Just kind of move it around. Just going to move it around this way. A little bit through here. There we go. That's where we need it. Good. Clean my brush again. Dry my brush again. And I'm going to pick up some of this blue. Pick up some, some lighter areas right there. And I'm going to add a little bit more blue into this section right through here. Take a little bit more. So you'll notice that my paint is drying and I'm starting to get these edges. So to smooth out those edges, I'm going to clean and dry my brush and then just kind of brush between the light and the dark section right through there, just kind of feather it out. There we go. This to be lighter too, so I'm going to take some of this away. Take some of this away. <clears throat> there we go. So far, so good. So I'm noticing that I'm getting a little bit of a, a puddle here of this other color. And I really don't want it to, to, to stay like that. So I'm going to take a little bit of this paper towel and soak it up like that. There we go. I do like this, though. That's a, a nice little uh, dark area. And it's looking pretty good on the screen. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pause here because I need this to dry before I can do anything else. Um, I'm actually going to move on and do start painting the coat next. But as I said before, if I try to paint um, an area adjacent to a wet area and I accidentally touch um, the, the other area, it's going to bleed into it. Um, and while that's not uh, particularly too much of a problem when it's blue and blue, I do want it to kind of have a, a crisp edge so that it starts uh, popping forward as the foreground. Um, so, uh, thank you very much if you're watching this. There's one person watching, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and pause here, but I'm gonna leave this running, because um, I'll be back. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna pause it so that I can take a break, uh, and then I'll be back um, to paint some more. So, uh, thank you for stopping by. Um, I will see you next time. And if you're watching this on video, uh, Magic! I'm gonna, it's going to be dry in just a few seconds. So, uh, thank you.